Okay, now, <clears throat> the first thing is that I, I did notice some figures, unfortunately I don't have them to hand, but at the time of 2008, there were published figures of the amount of money that was held in banks and all these sort of financial institutions, and compared it to GDPs and so on, and it, it was several orders of magnitude greater. So consequently, a lot of that money couldn't represent wealth. Yeah. It was, it was nothing, <laughs> right? So therefore, logically, if by whatever process it disappears, it's abolished or, or whatever, uh, it couldn't really do that much harm. Okay. But by definition. Secondly, I have noticed some very uh, definite political ideological decisions, particularly by this government, in the way it spends money and, and the Bank of England spends money. So, for example, it deliberately has withdrawn money from wealth producing sectors like the public sector, which does produce useful goods that are exchanged, albeit for tax. Uh, but that's deliberate, while printing loads of money that's handed to the banks through the QE and other means. So quite clearly, and, 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 and there are things like university spending potentially, all sorts of infrastructure research, all the whole potential for money we need to spend on uh, climate change, etc. And those things are not done, clearly not because people are extremely stupid, but because mm. they have that ideological mm. belief mm. And, and, you know, they want to, by hook or by crook, revive a parasitic and moribund capitalist pri a private sector, at least in Britain. So I don't know where that leaves okay. congratulative and whatever, well, no, but it certainly doesn't. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let, me say, let me say a couple of couple of things about about that. But one one thing is about about QE. One that one thing I can agree with you on is that QE has only worked to the extent that it has propped up the banks. Um, if it hadn't happened, I still think that we would have been in a more severe recession. The Bank of England does. They, I don't disagree with their modelling. I think it's a bit hit and miss because they don't really know how it works. Uh, that's the truth. They, they admit they don't need, really know which of the mechanisms uh, that they think might be in, in play are really working when it sustains demand. But I think it, it means that we were probably going to look at a minus three type recession through 2008, 2009, 10, 11, if we didn't have QE. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, no, it isn't working to stimulate demand. If we, the, the, the classic versions of QE uh, that the textbook tells you to do, tell you to pump it through the banks into the economy. And that isn't happening. Now we saw Paul Tucker, only the other day, the deputy governor of the bank, say, well, we might think about doing uh, negative interest rates. So that means you pay if you put your money in with the Bank of England. Because the QE money just goes into the banks, and then they take it, and then they deposit it with the Bank of England. Okay? Um, at very low interest rates, which the Bank of England makes money on. The government, in fact, makes money on. But... Um, you know, that's quite a coercive thing to do, isn't it? To force the entire population that saves into negative, in to real negative interest rates, nominally negative. There are negative interest rates right now, as you'll know if you've got any savings, but that's because of inflation. But nominally negative interest rates, that's, co that's quite coercive. All right, okay, but it's doable. Um, Nationalising RBS and taking its 50 billion uh, book of commercial loans and re restructuring them to pump them out into small businesses, that's socialism. You can't do that. But you can, but you can, but you can force people to have ne negative interest rates. This is the discussion I had with Darling. It's the discussion, I don't, my, I'm not privileged enough to have the discussion with George Osborne, Vince Cable. Uh, Vince Cable probably wants to nationalise, I think, in his heart of hearts, RBS. But what I'm saying is, look, th there, are, there are things that, as you say, and I think it is ideological, some things are doable, negative interest rates, some things you're not allowed to do. And you live in a fantasy world where one day RBS gets sold as a sort of, as a sort of viable investment bank with everything, investment bank, commercial arm, consumer. That was the strategy with RBS for for a considerable num uh, number of years after the crisis. It's the one that Darling started on. Brown appointed the current management to do that. 
they were the most vocal behind the scenes against so-called Project Merlin and being forced to lend to small businesses, I can tell you. Um, so, look, you know, th th I think you might be right, on at least on one of these things. Um, there's an ideology in play about what you can and can't do. Uh, as to the whole parasitism of the private sector, I'll, I'll leave that for another day. We've got time for another yeah, person?